Hello friends, it's Dave here from Save Decks. And I'm Sophie. And we're bringing you a discussion review because just last week we were sent an email by a game developer. Yes, Serb. Serb Games, yes. And they asked us if we wanted to review an upcoming game of theirs called Super Cable Boy. Which is a game we noticed in the coming soon on the eShop and it was like, oh, that looks interesting. So we were delighted to receive a review code we for were. this. Thank I think I remember you going... Oh my gosh, I absolutely want to play that game. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so thank you so much to the developer for providing us with a review copy for this game. And we, are, we have played it to completion and we are now here to bring you our thoughts on this game. So before we begin, we've got plenty more reviews like this going to happen in the future. So why not hit that subscribe button and join the party? So what is Super Cable Boy then? Super Cable Boy is a 2D platformer about a tiny little Game Boy, I guess. He kind of looks like a Game Boy, doesn't he? Kinda he kind of reminds me of Bimo from Adventure Time. He's on this mission because there's this evil force or something called the Glitch yep. that's taking over Cable Boy's world and grr, go get him. That's pretty <laughs> much the story. Save us, Super Cable Boy. What do we do on this game then? So to start off with, you basically do your basic platforming, so jumping, and you can also wall jump to start off with, which is really cool. But then you receive these cartridges and they give you special abilities. So one of them is, we won't tell you all of them, but one of them is um, swinging with your cable. And I have to say, swinging mechanics in games, I really love that. Absolutely. If a game has swinging in it, I'm sold. And um, the second one we will tell you is sort of a triple jump. I think it's more a double jump, but you've got that extra boost. boost kind jump. of like in Celeste yes. that you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are four cartridges in total, but we won't ruin the other two for you because they are quite fun. They're all fun to play and the level designs are centered around them once you get them. Mm -hmm. And you can switch between the different cartridges with L and R. Yes, which I think is awesome. To scroll through them. But honestly, the levels themselves sort of lend themselves really well to each one. And at some points, if you require a certain cartridge for a certain jump, then there'll be this sort of vortex thing that changes you to that color automatically. So you don't have to worry too much about selecting the correct power because the game pretty much sort of helps you out with that, so which was a really nice touch I found. Absolutely, and then um, another thing to mention on the world, there's eight worlds in total. Yes, and I love how these are designed for this. Yes. There's a lot of uh, punny language <laughs> yes. in it, like one of the worlds is called the power plant and it's trees basically, yes. which, and then you've got the cloud which is actually up in the clouds and Tower um, of Hanoi, which is a telegraph pole. Telegraph pole, so it's all things like that. And I really, really like the sort of thoughts that's gone into creating this world. Yeah. One of the things that's going on with this game as well is it's got collectible onigiri um, rice balls. Yes. And um, you, But as in Celeste, you don't need them to complete the um, game. Yes, they're not required. And even you don't even get a reward. I think in Celeste you did get something for collecting them, but in this game it tells you outright there's no reason to get them they're just there if you want to yeah. tick on your list or whatever which I, I kind of at first was going out of my way to get them but eventually I was like no nah, I just want to play through the game. Another cool thing is that the death counter is in binary. Yes and I noticed that it's, it's one of those I've said this about modern platformers where life counts are sort of counting for less and less now that you can save all the time like getting game over doesn't really mean anything anymore so i like that platformers i'm seeing are including death counts instead so you sort of beat the game and just see how many times you died and it took me a while to notice that it is in binary i mean i don't know if you noticed that without me telling you i, th I said is it in binary and yeah. you said oh yes and speaking of the levels, because you will die a lot in this game, the levels themselves are short in design but fast paced and you just basically get from point A to point B and as we've mentioned there's ball jumping and then there's the cartridge abilities as well that help you get through. If you die you just go back to the beginning, there's no checkpoints but there's no need for them as the levels are so short for the most part. When you get to the end of a world it's not always a case of accessing the next one you have a boss fight yes. at the end of some of the worlds and they're all done using the cartridge ability. Yeah. Like you have one for each cartridge ability and then you get your new one afterwards. And then some of them, like you got the tower telegraph pole world and then once you've got that new ability you have to go back to level one of that world 
legs because instead of going up that pole you now need to go to the right and you needed that new ability to go to yep. the right so the the world's design isn't linear i mean it's sort of you have to do it in the same order but how it's set out makes it seem like a real world mm -hmm. okay so regarding the game's difficulty it starts off quite easy in my opinion Yes. And, I mean, you were finding it all right, weren't you? Yeah, I did. I got quite far. I think it was the power plant world, which is like the fourth world, I think, where yes. we started to struggle with it. Mm -hmm. And it sort of got a bit difficult. But I will say right now, when I got to the last two worlds in particular, obviously we won't show it because of spoilers, my word, it gets so insanely difficult. <laughs> and some of these levels, I was on them for a long time. And this is where I said for the most part the levels are short. But in these last two worlds, the levels get longer and you're having to switch between the four powers constantly. And if you take one hit, you all the way back to the beginning of the level, which yeah. could get a bit annoying. And it's, again, a term we've learned recently is called Twitch Platformer, mm -hmm. where it's like, insanely precise controls that you have to do to get through the certain obstacles and sometimes I felt like there wasn't really enough warning for what hazard's gonna come up which sometimes you'll learn one part then you'll immediately die because you don't know what's gonna come up next or what you're meant to do next and then you'll start that level all the way to the beginning and then it might take you like 10 or 20 tries to get to that point again by which time you've forgotten what's gonna come up. Yeah, that's true. And that can get a bit annoying sadly but overall I, I love that sort of thing. I really enjoyed the, the challenge of it. I didn't get to the last levels yet because um, you were playing ahead of me. I really enjoyed like having a difficult level and then finishing it and then feeling really good about myself. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, I've you know I managed to beat this game, but you know I've beaten Cuphead, so you know <laughs> I'm quite good at these games. But a lot of people are not keen on these sorts of Twitch platformer difficulty things. So just be warned about that. The game does ease you in, all right. You do get to know the mechanics quite well but it does ramp up the difficulty at the end, so just be warned of that. So we've just quickly touched on controls before, as in LNR changing the cartridges. Yeah. Um, so you've got Y for the action button. Depending on what cartridge you have activated. And B is to jump, and then obviously left stick to move. Yeah, so it's quite straightforward. I mean, anyone can pick up and play this game. Oh, yes, it's um, so easy to sort of get into, which is nice. It's, it's all, all it needs, really. Also, a quick note, you can use the right stick to see what's ahead. Yeah, I, that was a good idea. But obviously, in the later levels, you're not really able to stop still a lot of the time. So looking ahead that sort of gets taken away from you a bit. But mm -hmm. if, if there are times where you can stand still, I should have mentioned that you can look ahead if you want to. And another great thing about this game is there is co-op. And usually I'm not a fan when co-op is sort of feel shoehorned into platformers that you can play on your own. But I feel this one does it right. Yes, so you get the split screen if you are separated and also as in Rayman when you die you become a ghost and you can float to your partner and respawn. Yeah uh, this the, the co-op does not become a hindrance you can happily play the whole game without co-op it's fine but if you've got someone who wants to play with you having someone if someone's like never played these sorts of games before it's not going to be a hindrance at all you can just leave them behind only one of you needs to get to the end of the level. Yeah. And um, again, if they die, they just become a ghost and can swim next to you. And it goes split screen if you go too far away from each other. It doesn't hinder you at all. I really liked how this co-op was implemented. We had a lot of fun with it. And it could actually help you collect the onigiri rice cakes as well. Okay, so let's talk about the art style. Super Cable Boy is pixel art. It's, um, it's got quite a monochrome to start off with. As you change cartridges, the colours are different. Yeah, so it's a nice little visual clue to sort of remind you what cartridge you have activated. Mm -hmm. It's always a nice touch, always appreciate that. Cable Boy himself is very cute. He reminds me of Bimo, and at one point he even says mathematical, which, you know, is maybe, from Adventure Time. Yeah, maybe that was a reference on purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's cute, knows. though. I love it. Yeah, definitely. I quite like the character designs in this in general. I would say it's very simple look to it, but it's all you need for a game like this, and it's sort of... An, incorporates the whole this is a digital world sort of aesthetic to it absolutely um, and so obviously i'll see the glitches here taking over and this 
sort of like anything that looks like it shouldn't be there is deadly to you yeah basically and the glitches do look deadly they're these black holes of but like also squarish sharp yeah. looking and they're oh, moving yeah. aren't they slightly oh there'll be moments where you're in a level and then suddenly like on the computer like an error message will come up blocking your way yeah so again it really incorporates the the world that they've built and yes. make it part of the gameplay um, Cable Boy also has really cute speech bubbles, like they're really <laughs> adorable little emojis in them as well. Like it's those ones that you get when you type, so it's yeah. not it's not like normal emojis that you and, get now. And he has a plug that sort of follows him around, sort of thing. He uses that for swinging. Yes. And also when you reach into the level, it's an actual plug socket that it you is, yeah. throw your plug into, and that's how you beat the levels. So the music sounds like very much like a Game Boy. Yeah, it's sort of like the retro feel to it as well. And, and it you helps see, you progress as well. And he sort of mentions the uh, little voice clips as well. I do, when he, when you get the onigiri rice cakes, he goes, onigiri! <laughs> yeah, it's just really cute, yeah, yeah. isn't it? An example of the music is in the cloud, it's quite ethereal, it's like you're in heaven. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when you get a cartridge as well, it does that THX sound effect, yeah, that... Um, yeah, that thing that they like to deafen you with before you see a film. Absolutely. So how much does this game cost? So this costs £12.59, €13.99 and €14.99. It's um, 281 megabytes and it's released on the 24th of June. So yeah, and so for that, the game took me between five and six hours to beat. And I'll tell you, I got up to the last sort of two worlds in about three hours. Mm -hmm. But man, I was on those last two worlds for a long, long time. And so it's up to you whether... I feel like this was a really good game for its price. I do too. I think it's a fantastic game. It's replayable if you want to go back and get all the rice balls and if you want to also beat your death count yes. as well and it's one you can play at local co-op and yep. you can play it as if you're playing it solo if you want like having a second player doesn't hinder you at all it or no. it's just you've got a second person playing the game same time as you it really hasn't have, doesn't have much effect on your gameplay so anyone can play it's yeah. pretty cool nice one to pick up yeah definitely and aesthetically it's really good and um yeah i felt the gameplay spot on i had so much fun with it yeah, so thank you so much for the developer for giving us this review yeah, code. Yeah, thank you so much. We really, we really like it when we're given a game to review that we end up really enjoying. It's why we wanted to do a discussion review because we both really enjoyed this game. Yeah, and we wanted to sort of both get our thoughts out there like this. Absolutely. So definitely thank you so much to everyone who has uh, watched this review as well. We both recommend this game. Highly recommend. Cool, so let us know in the comments down below what you think of this game. Do you like the look of it? Is it one you're planning to buy? And um, I think you should. Also, while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe. That really helps us out a lot. And thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.